Welcome to the Sea of Thieves movement guide. I think movement is one of the parts of the game that is a little bit underappreciated. And I think it's really the difference between a good player and a great player. Being able to move is not only being able to dodge shots, but also being able to navigate the boat effectively and have yourself in a good position for TDM, but also sometimes for just general naval combat. I've timestamped this video so that you can go forwards or backwards uh, through the video to any part that you need to rewatch or are just excited to get to early. Uh, but I'll quickly outline what we're going to go through. We're going to go through preemptive movement. So before anything has happened, proactive, which is like, you know, reaction uh, to something that's going to happen and responsive, which is like after something's happened. Um, I'll talk about how waves affect your movement, some general tips that work on all boats, and then some boat specific tricks for movement around boats. This is for the most part set for like hourglass, so it's less of a, this isn't a movement guide for if you're on an island, though a lot of these tips will apply there, but I'm mainly focusing about in hourglass, you're on a sloop, you're on a galley, you're on a brig, just boat PvP, because that's what I'm focused on mainly. So getting us started, we got to talk about preemptive movement, which is before anyone has fired a single shot and I'm just moving around trying to stop someone from hitting me. I don't know when they're going to shoot. I'm not ready for it. All I'm doing is I'm just going to be moving. Now you don't want to move back and forth because if you move back and forth, it's obvious. When I go to the left, I go back to the right. I go back to the left, go back to the right. Anyone can predict this. And if you've played any game that uses timing, any platformer even, you can tell that when movement's predictable, it's really easy to hit something. Um, so general movement, even if you just do a circle, is a little bit better. Instead of just going left and right, just having a little bit of a second dimension to your movement really just makes it a lot harder. But then to add that, you really want to just randomize it. So sometimes you go more this way, more the other way. Just really make it random. Sometimes you can just stop. It's a little confusing. But also adding in sprinting is really good. Uh, and sometimes you don't even have to look. If the person's behind me over here, then I could be looking the other way and just moving around forwards, backwards. I don't actually have to be looking at the thing that I'm dodging, right? So movement that's preemptive is just before any shots are fired, I'm just trying to be harder to hit than if I stood still, held still, and aimed my gun. I mean, personally, I find it a lot harder to aim if I'm completely stationary. It's a lot easier to aim if you sort of use your movement to move. Because I'm moving my, like, the center of my screen while I move with my WASD keys, as well as when I move my mouse, right? So I think it might be different on controller, I don't know, but at least on a mouse, uh, mouse and keyboard, for the most part, movement is actually really helpful for aim. And getting used to moving while aiming at one thing. Like, I'm sort of just trying to aim at ladder as I jump around here. Um, it's certainly a useful skill. The next part is proactive movement, which is like when you're expecting a shot to be fired, doing a slight dodge. And I know this isn't quite the same as if I had a real person, but I'll quickly load a uh, flare in here. Um, I'm going to fire it, and just before it shoots, that's when I want to dodge the other way, right? So you want to be moving and then change directions when you think someone's going to fire. Now, you might know they're going to fire because they've got their ammo reloaded or they've just started ADSing you, but that's when you change what you're doing. So if I'm running down the boat in a straight line and I'm running straight at someone, if I'm about to, if, if they're, we'll say they're right here, this is where I'm standing. I'm coming down here, running at them. Last second, I dodge the side because as they get to this, I'm this spot, that's like blunder distance, right? You shoot your blunder and I've just dodged the side and they've completely missed. So proactive means if you're closing distance, you can kind of guess when they're going to shoot and just dodge the side, right? And a quick dodge, especially when you're sprinting, is really effective. They might hit one or two pellets, but not enough to make you one snipe, right? And I'm thinking in general for blunder and sniper. Um, the other step with proactive movement is think about sword. They have like an aim cone. So if someone's got a, a sword, they can only hit you at a certain range. So you know that range is really easy. But with sniper pistol and blunder, it's a little bit more complicated. You just sort of, you get to know the player and you get to know the distance the guns can be fired at. Um, with snipers, you kind of got to wait for someone to stand still for a second and sort of aim at you. Um, or just know the player you're playing against and just dodge to the side. Now I say dodge to the side, but you can also just be moving on my end and just stop. So if I'm like uh, moving this this way, like this, and I know someone's about to shoot, I can just stop and then keep moving. So if you're moving linearly and predictably, you can just stop and they'll shoot in front of you. But of course this gets way better with practice. And responsive um, movement is more like after you've been shot, when you've got to get away and you've got to eat. Now, I think this is most um, clear with sword, because when you get hit by sword, you take knockback on the third hit. So usually, especially since season 10, they made it really easy to hit a three hit combo with sword. Once you've been hit with the first one, you're probably going to get hit twice more. So I would say if I'm getting hit, I'm going to wait until that knockback and I'm going to run away and eat or reload my gun and go for the shot. As long as when I've been hit three times, because the fourth one will kill me, 
If I get hit three times when I'm here, I'll get knocked back to here. I need to hit this shot before they swing again. Because there's a slight delay before they swing again, but if they swing again, I will die. Or I've got to eat as I get knocked away. Right? Um, so reactive movement besides sword is stuff like if I'm below deck and there's water, then jumping. Or if I'm going upstairs, you can jump against this little roof here and you get a little boost out. Reactive movement is mostly just evasion, right? And that might be using this sort of table to do ring around a rosy, ring around the rosy rather. Or um, this mask just to sort of loop around it, get away from someone. And it's also like going back and forth and back and forth just to dodge shots if they still have a gun loaded. But responsive movement really relies on your knowledge. If I know that a person has two guns and they fired both bullets, I'm just going to run straight away from them. I don't have to worry about them hitting me because they haven't got any ammo. So I don't really have to dodge. It's just about getting as much distance as I possibly can. <clears throat> Although if they do have a bullet left, I need to get behind cover or I need to do some really good dodging where I sort of stop and let them shoot um, or just put something at least halfway over me like this wheel, uh, like the wheel or this, this capstone. The next part of the guide, I want to think about waves and how that affects your movement because there's, there's a little bit to it, right? And if you're in really high waves, it's really obvious, but even in low waves, there is a little bit of um, a difference to how you move around the boat. So you think about the cannon, you might notice you can't actually always jump over it. So it'll sort of slide me to the side, but sometimes you can get a clean jump over it. And this just relies on the rock of the boat. If this side of the boat where I'm standing over here is higher up, then I can jump over it. But if I try and jump the other way, I slide and I get stuck to the side. But now I'm high again, I can jump over it. So it's really just a question of looking like here, and looking at this wall here, and this wall here, and look which one's higher. This one's higher, so I can jump over it. This one's higher now, I can jump over it. They're flat. So I can probably still jump over it, yeah. This one's higher, so I shouldn't be able to jump this way. Yep. So the wave can affect the height that you have to jump, right? You, you think about that pretty simply. That's, that's common sense. Where this really starts to make a difference is when you're climbing up the side here. Because sometimes you can make this in one jump. You can just jump onto this cannon barrel. Um, if I'm on a really good wave. Otherwise, I have to jump on the wall and then up here. And same with the top. You can make it up in one jump, on a good jump. Sometimes you can't even make it up to, like, here. Right, which is in heart, all the way up. So if you are jumping on the top, you can jump to the side. But it really depends on the wave. When climbing stairs, you always just want to jump up stairs unless there's a cannonball that's coming, it's going to knock you off. Because if the waves rise, then it's going to be really hard to get up the stairs sometimes. Right, some general tips is like, this is an obvious one, a lot of people already know this. When the water comes up a little bit higher, you're obviously slowed down. But if you jump, you can get a little bit more speed. Depending on if you hit something on the roof, some of the roof bits are like higher up and they sort of knock you around. But for the most part, jumping when you're below deck will just let you move a lot faster um, uh, when, you're, when you're down here and there's water at your sort of waist level. And uh, sometimes using your head on the roof, I said this earlier, also just gives you a boost. Like if you hit angled things, like the tops of stairs, It'll just give you a little bit of boost up. There's also like little spots like here where you can get a little bit of a boost out. And just jumping around when you're below deck can just be really quick for getting up and away from someone. Uh, another general tip for most boats, in fact every boat, is the, the use of like the wheel and the uh, capstan and the masts to just dodge and just to block shots. Standing behind wheel here, you're not going to get hit as much because there's a whole wheel in the way. And same with anchor. Even if they can shoot you over the top, the blunderbuss belt will spread. And you can also jump off the front of the boat and then jump here and grab the harpoon on pretty much every boat. I think, yeah, I think you can do this on every boat where you're just on the front and jump to the side, look like you're jumping up and you grab it there. That works on everything. Um, and also you can jump to the side on this bowsprit and then land back on it. Just if someone's aiming a sniper shot from really far away and they just sort of aim in the middle, you can jump to the side to dodge that. Running along the edge of boats is something that a lot of people do, um, and it can be helpful, it's just it's a little risky sometimes, and really with boat, with the boat rocking, like, sometimes it's not even worth it. It's a lot better, I would say, on the brigantine, um, it's probably where it's the most useful, but um, it is something you can do on, on all boat sizes. Um, the problem is it does also just make it really easy for you to get knocked off. If a cannonball hits you, or like a single blunderbuss pellet hits you, you're probably going to get knocked off. One thing that's like another general tip is just crossing the midline of the boat, especially on longer boats like the Brigantine, is when you cross the middle, it can break a sideline and make it a little bit harder to be followed. And just breaking LOS with a person is just usually quite helpful. So if you just sit behind this barrel while you eat, it's a lot harder to just get hit because you could go this way, you could go this way. They don't know where you are exactly. It just makes it a little bit harder, a little bit of a basic movement tip. 
Um, for a couple boat specific tips, um, on sloop, there's a couple little tricks, like on the back you can go from here, you can run to the side and you can jump all the way up here, to the top deck. Um, sure, you can also go through this, you can also go through this ladder, um, and I think you can do it on the other side, it's just sort of a bit weird with the boat rocking. Alright, well that's not happening. Um, you can jump up the cannonball barrel, um, and if you have a really good rock, you can make it up in one jump. There it is, and you can just sort of walk over. Um, but also you can just jump up the side here. Uh, you can jump up the top. If you jump to the side, you can do it in one jump. Otherwise, if you jump up the middle, you land at the halfway point, and you have to jump all the way up. Um, so it's definitely worth jumping to the side here and going to the middle, so it looks like if you were to follow you, you would go that way. On Brig, I don't really know a lot of tricks besides just sort of running around the anchor and like going backwards and just changing directions a lot, jumping up here. Um, jumping along the side of the Brig, this is probably the boat that's the best for running alongside of. You can just practice this um, at outpost. Below deck, um, crossing the midline is really helpful. You can just sort of go across here. There's really like two sections of the bottom deck, which is on this side and this side. Um, and you can shoot through every part of this, which is really an advantage. Like even these wooden bits, you can just shoot through. Um, that's not really a movement, but it's it's relevant when you're trying to do movement. Um, and if you're going to go around here with someone chasing you, I'd always recommend going through the middle bit. It's just a little bit more confusing. Um, going back here is a bit of a death sentence, especially if there's more than two uh, two or three people on this boat. Because if I go this way, there could be one person, and this way could be two. Could even be someone up there. Like, Brig is a lot harder. And back here is also like a death area for movement, because sure, you could shoot someone through here, but you get cornered. And you can shoot through the stairs, that's also pretty useful, but... Generally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going below deck very often on a brig if you're on a boat with other people. Um, but brig, yeah, sure, you can jump along masts. For the most part, it's not, it's not super, um, there's not a lot of tricks for brig, I would say. I might be wrong, I don't really play it a lot, but I don't think there's many massive tricks for brig. I'm no genius with galleon either. Um, there is obviously tricks like fat walking, which is where if the boat's rocking... To the, to the side, you can run along everywhere, like, uh, where, basically where this blue line is. You can run along this because the boat is so tilted, um, which is actually really interesting. Obviously, you can run along here already with, if you just jump across and you don't fuck it up like I did. But, like, a general thing that I'll do on Galleon is just jump over the side here. And to try and keep this jump, uh, this run, is, like, a little, uh, a little bit important, right? You want to be able to turn this corner by just shaking your mouth, because if you hit one of these... You lose your sprint, and then you have to start it again. The other option is that you can also just keep spamming shift and then not really worry about it, and you'll just restart sprinting. Um, but getting used to just sort of blindly jumping this corner um, is pretty helpful, just so you know, uh, just knowing where these little bits on the side are, um, so that I can just jump off the side um, and be on a safe spot. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of galleon like route people say, like, oh, you know, run this way, turn the anchor, go back across, go through captains, Turn left. I think some people can. You can jump up the side here sometimes if you're if you're on a good wave, uh, yeah, and you run around the back. Jump on this one. Go back here. Go back in Captain's Wars. Then come out. Then go down here. But um, really, that's all just practice. You can go anywhere. You obviously need to come down here sometimes to get ammo. But there's a lot of space below deck on Galleon, uh, which is different to Brig. But it's still a little bit dangerous against Sword because there's still these tight choke points um, where you can kind of get blocked off against like a Galleon of you know swappy sword users. Um, for the most part, I don't recommend going along this wall, just because you just can't sprint along it, because there's so many cannons in the way. Um, so I recommend not really going below deck, but staying up here, jumping along these sides here, um, learning to just go through there smoothly, jumping up here. Don't try and jump along these cannons. If you can, you want to drop down to the side here. Um, but when you go across these little bits, if you try and jump to the next one, you're going to hit this, you're going to hit the, the plank, so you need to get on it and then keep going. Or, uh, preferably you just change sides at that point, and you go along the other side. Uh, all of this is practice, right? You can just get on a boat at any point and practice your sort of movement around a specific boat. But then if you really want to actually learn good movement for like evading shots and such, you really need to get an hourglass and board people's boats and figure it out. Um, I'll play a couple examples um, of some movement uh, that I think I did alright on. Uh, mainly, this is mainly for the big three, the preemptive, proactive, and responsive movement. Um, but I hope you enjoy the clips, and I hope you enjoy the guide so far. We'll basically just end it off with these um, with these clips. Thank you for watching.
moving too. I love movement. 